This is my review of the Jelly Bean Link for the Samsung Galaxy S3. First thing you'll notice when you turn it on is that you have this little X thing. That was the way it was with the first original leak. Then they updated it to LIH, which people were like, mine's not the X, mine's different. That is correct, because it was the stock Samsung thing. Well, they released a kernel update, some zip that you flash in recovery, that brings this back and supports other custom boot animations. So that you all can see this for yourself, I'm gonna go to the battery. And look at that, one day, 15 hours, 32 minutes. The battery life on this is amazing. I've probably only had to charge it about two or three times since I got this ROM. Now I'm gonna go ahead and charge it. And you'll see now that it's charging. When you bring that notification bar, first thing you'll notice is that it doesn't scroll anymore which I like that. It got a little bit annoying bringing it down and every single time you did that, it would scroll all the way to the left. You couldn't change it. And also it shows the date and the time. Clear your notifications. Whenever you're doing something and it's not sure what to recall, like I'll open up Plume and try to find a link. For example, here's this video here. Open it up. And you'll click on something like YouTube, but you'll actually have to press just once or always. So we'll press just once and it'll launch the YouTube app. It's not my video, so I can't play it. So that's something that's different. Just once or always. Multitasking is a little bit different. You hold down the home button and you'll notice that you have three icons down here. You can swipe them away as usual, or you can press this, which gets rid of all of them. Now you can also press this and it takes you to your area that you can clear your memory, uninstall apps, and etc. Just press clear memory. It says 46 applications were closed. So that's a little different. And when you press the home button down, you can press Google now and it brings up all your cards. That's a better view, I believe. To actually get it to do something, you've got to press this little icon and start talking. Alternatively, instead of doing that, you can just hold down the menu button for a couple seconds and that pops up and you start typing in what you want to type in or you press the little button and start saying stuff. Remind me to go to the dentist at 9.30. Setting alarm. Turn up the media. We'll do that again. Hold down the menu button. Set an alarm for 6.30 p.m. Setting alarm. There you go. So there's a couple different ways. This is removable if you don't like it. But I kind of like it there because at any time I can just press this button and start talking. So you've got that, the menu button, and holding in the home button. You'll also notice that when you bring up your settings, there are extra options in here. Not really anything under here. But you get blocking mode. When the mode is enabled, notifications for selected features will be disabled. You will only receive notifications of incoming calls from people on your allowed list. Then you can set the time. It looks really faint because it is. I'll have to press this. And there you go. Brings up a little notification saying that blocking mode is enabled. I'm going to disable it. Home screen mode, basic mode, easy mode. Basic mode provides a conventional layout for the apps and widgets on your home screen. Easy mode provides an easier experience for first time smartphone users from their home screen. Am I a first time smartphone user? No, I'm not. Press cancel. Power saving mode, CPU power savings, screen power saving, background color, turn off haptic feedback. Lock screen. Now all your options are under here instead of going through menu, security, lock screen, and etc. So under screen lock, we have a pattern set, and there you can change it to anything you'd like. Like swipe, motion, face unlock, face invoice, pattern, pin, password, and none. 
with swipe unlock means that if I have it set the way it is now where I put in a pattern, it'll still bring up that little thing where I have the quick icons. Let's do that real quick because I kind of want to show you something. Under lock screen options, under shortcuts, I can press on it and I can change this to Google Voice since I don't use the built-in one anyway. Alright, now I'm going to lock it and then unlock it. And you'll see right here, you have your quick settings. I can jump straight to Google Voice, which would show my messages, so I'm not going to do that. Or I can open up Google Now, and then it still wants me to put in my pattern. And there we go. I don't like making the pattern visible, because somebody that's watching you can easily just follow the pattern. Lock automatically. I like to set it like at 15 seconds. That means once the screen turns off via a timeout, meaning you didn't touch your phone for a while, you can easily unlock it without putting your code in. Lock instantly with power key means as soon as you press that power button, it's asking you to put your code back in. Owner information, I like that because you can actually change it to like Josh McAllister, put in your address, put in an alternate contact. So that way if somebody picks up your phone and then tries to unlock it, they'll see whatever text you have, which mine isn't showing at the moment. Let's see if it works now. Well, don't know why it's not showing. What if I mess up? Whatever. Cloud? Add an account? Yeah. I just use Dropbox. It just says right there. Backup and reset just lets you choose the options on whether you want to store it in your Google account or not. Motion? Wow. Lots and lots of things to play with in here. I'll slowly go through it so you can read it. Direct call, smart alert, double tap, tilt to zoom, pan and move icon, browse to move images, shake to update, turn over to mute and pause. That seems kind of cool. If you're playing music, you just put your phone over and it'll stop playing the sounds. Sensitivity settings, palm swipe to capture, means you swipe your hand over it and it takes a screenshot. And clear notifications. That's about all I'm going to show you for this part. You'll see right here it says Android 411. And of course, the normal jelly bean icon guy thingy majig that you hold down on. And you start flipping things out of the way. You can use more than one finger. What if you can use three? One, two, three. Get it? Get it? Oh, you can use three. You can see that we're running the LIH build. If you're running LIH or another build, you can simply just flash it on top of your current one. Just make sure you wipe your cache and dial it cache before flashing. And always do an Android backup before flashing a newer build because a newer build may have more bugs than the old one or something. And you want to go back, but you can't because you didn't make an Android backup. So, yeah. Just make sure you have an Android backup. There was a quick thing with the first build, I believe it was, where instead of doing the normal two fingers up and down to get your notifications to expand, you actually pinch to zoom. But I can tell you right now that using two fingers works just fine with the latest leak. The way they did folders is a little bit different this time. You can hold down on something like this and you can create folder. Name it something, just unname it. Now it's got the little Gmail icon there. I can take the plume and drag it in there. And I press on it. Ooh, it's like more like a traditional thing. I'll do social. Which this is SwiftKey. I love SwiftKey, if you don't know. Oh, I need to press enter. Now it says social. And I can put Facebook, put whatever I want to put in there. Now I don't know how to get it to go out of the group. I guess I gotta remove something and then move it outside of it. <gasps> we'll practice it right here. Take the Gmail icon, bring it out. And then you can just take this and remove it. And take the Gmail icon, bring it back. Yeah, that's how that works. One thing that the Jelly Bean build has taken away is the data. Before, a feature that I really liked, with AOSP, if your Wi-Fi is using activity, it has little icons that go up and down to let you know whether it's sending or receiving. You do not get those with the Jelly Bean link. It just stays that same color icon forever. And with the official Ice Cream Sandwich builds, you actually have little arrows right underneath that icon letting you know whether the data was being sent or being received from your phone. I really missed that. Bring it back, please. <laughs> One of the last things I want to show you real quick is we'll open up something like, hmm, music player. This one. If I lock it and unlock it, 
Why is it showing up this way? Maybe I didn't charge it. All right, that's a little bit frustrating because the other day I was in the bathroom and I went to unlock it. Oh, maybe that's with Google Music. Let's try that. Sorry. Play music. We'll do what's the difference. And then lock it and unlock it. Oh, yep, yeah, right there. Pause. Skip to the next track. Pause. Go back. Yep, it works with Google Play Music. Sweet. Only thing that really sucks is that that stupid icon is there indefinitely until you press on it and then you press menu. Oh, you can't even do it right there. You actually got to click on this right here and then press menu and then press end and then it goes away. It's frustrating. Change that. That's about it. This is almost finished, I'm assuming. Frieza said that another leak is expected and I was wanting to install it before doing this video, but People are growing impatient, and I have people on Twitter asking me when the next video is. Actually, it was a comment on my video from this guy right here, X Station 20. Please do more videos in the S3. Here's one for you right now. Official Jelly Bean. It is a leak, but I have had no issues with it. Battery life is amazing, and I'm the kind of person that likes to have the latest and greatest on my phone at all time. In fact, on all of my devices. Now, I need to end this video because my daughter's getting home from school soon and I gotta go get her, and then she's gonna be really loud, so yeah. Gotta edit this video, upload it. If you're not following me on Twitter, please do so. And I automatically tweets when I post a new video. Sometimes YouTube sub boxes are broken, so if you want to stay updated on the very latest video, follow me on Twitter. It'll tweet as soon as the video publishes. And I also tweet about what videos I'm going to make for the day, what I plan on doing, and etc. So please follow me for now already. I use other services like Google+, Facebook, and etc. But I'm definitely most active on Twitter, which is Plume, right there. The best Twitter app in the world. I've got to get started on how to root my Transformer Prime, which I did a video on the official Jelly Bean update, and they released recovery for it today, build 2221, so I'll be installing that tomorrow. If you enjoyed this review, please feel free to leave this video a rating. If you're new to my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. This is What Would Josh Do, and I'm out. So I press the button on the mouse, and it focuses on me. We're going to watch The Walking Dead. There's some parts I have to walk away from. I can't stand blood. It pulls forward. You'll see it right there. Anyways, <laughs> so this year is a completely different year for me. I am a completely different person. I'm completely different. I'm changed. I'm not the person I was before January 31st of this year. 